once again people of the internet, Falcomaton here, and welcome back to my top 10 series. Basically, that's what it is, self-explanatory, it's just videos where I count down my top 10 favourite things. And today I thought I would talk about my top 10 favourite YouTubers. So, without further ado, let's just get straight into the list. Starting off the list, at number 10 we've got Super Butter Buns. Her four beginner videos are just some of the most hilarious introductions to video games that I've ever watched. If you go and watch one of her videos and you've never played that game, chances are by the time you're done watching it, you will just want to rinse through that game, like, and just, just do everything in it. Just, they're always hilarious and just, I love how she represents the Kingdom Hearts series. Just, oh, it's hilarious. And so truthful as well. Also, check out her Overwatch video, that, that's, that, that's really good. Coming in at number 9, we have Smo Yucho. Sarah, Andrew, Evan and Michael are just four awesome musicians who just come together to make these incredibly catchy and just amazing songs. And I would have them higher on my list, but I don't really watch or listen to them anymore. The reason that they're still on my list is because at least once a day, this song still plays in my head. Damn, 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 crispy crunch. Bacon. Taking the number 8 spot, we've got Dodie Clark, another musician who's just, she's just nice, she's really nice to listen to. When I'm feeling sad, I actually listen to your music because, and I'm going to actually butcher by phrasing of this, but her music doesn't attack you, and it just, it makes me feel warm emotions inside, it makes me happy again when I listen to it. Also, her vlogs are really inspiring, and she just, she seems like a strong-willed and just lovely person. She just, she seems lovely. What, what else is there to say? Up next we have the Slow Mo guys. As a filmmaker, this channel is just absolute heaven. If I didn't want to get into directing or writing as a career, I think I would take a very strong interest in uh, high-speed videography. Just every single video is just absolutely beautiful and hypnotizing and the minute I switch on one, I literally cannot take my eyes off the screen. I don't even blink. I'm just that interested in watching stuff that you will never be able to see with your own eye. Up next we have Jack and Dean, a sketch comedy Jew like no other. Each video is well produced with amazing comedy timing and I just, I laugh throughout. It's just, it's just good stuff. They're just really good at what they do. You don't even have to go that far into their channel to find some comedy gold. Superglued is a really good example of simplistic but really well executed comedy and you can just tell in every video that they're in or every shot they're in that Jack and Dean are just best friends, the chemistry's there. I mean, you don't get that with every sketch comedy duo. Bing! I've superglued yes! my Yes! I've been here the whole time! Don't yell at me, Bing! I'm vulnerable! I can't even look at you! Taking the halfway point at number 5 is The Game Grumps. Now, I don't watch gaming channels as much as I used to. I've kind of grown out of that phase a little bit. But Game Grumps is still one that I watch constantly. I watch nearly enough every show that they produce. But I always come back to the main Game Grumps shows. Just because I'll, I'll put on an episode not to watch the gameplay, just to listen to Aaron and Dan talk about something that will make me feel emotional or happy or sad or make me think because they're just they just seem like a lovely bunch and oh, they're just they're just hilarious all of them they need to get a little bit better playing games so <laughs> next up we have phone house or fun house but i prefer phone house just a network of misfits that i feel like i'm having a workout every time i watch one of their videos because my, my abs are sore because i'm laughing throughout the entire video it's just they're just, they're nobody but themselves in their videos, and they don't take themselves seriously at all. Honestly, it's not like they're going to that office to go to work. It looks like they're going to that office, which is more of a fun house. I, I butchered that pun. I, it, oh, I felt so proud writing that pun, and now I've just butchered it. Oh, why did I do that? Fuck me. <laughs> No, no, fuck yeah. those guys! No, 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 they're they're being no, nice. no, no, he's being nice. No, no, he's being nice. He's they being love nice. us. Castiel's being nice. Yeah, yeah. Fuck him! No, you want me to read it one more time? Uh, read it one, one more, more time. time. One more time. He says, I don't see what's wrong with them either. They made me laugh, and that's what counts. Fuck off. No, no, no! Oh, Joel, come on. No. Thank you! There you go. Nice job. Thanks. At number three, we've got Phil DeFranco. Just 
a consistently great content creator professional and just all round person. He's actually someone who I still watch pretty much daily on YouTube. I've seen him grow to become this titan of YouTube and honestly why this is like a big fantasy but it would be cool to interview him or to do a collaboration with him but the one thing I would love to do with Philip Franco most is just have like a 20 minute conversation with him because he's just so inspiring as a professional and just as a person that he just seems like a lovely guy just to have a chat with. Well done Philip, you, you, you really like great A YouTube and a great A human being. Taking the number two spot, and this actually might surprise a couple of people, is Rooster Teeth. Now, I don't include Funhouse in this, even though they're all part of the same network, because they're so different that I wanted to say that they were like their own thing. But this includes like Achievement Hunter, Let's Play, and all the other networking channels that uh, Rooster Teeth has built over the 15 years <laughs> online. I've been with Rooster Teeth since season two of Red vs. Blue, and the channel I feel like I can't say enough in this video, but I feel like I need to make my own video for this, but they provided me with hours of entertainment and so many opportunities in my life and have influenced me in so many ways that I don't think I'd be half the person I was if I didn't have risk in my life. I mean, I'm wearing a Blood Gulch t-shirt right now, but what can I say? You just gotta go check them out. Just an amazing company and so thankful for them. Holy shit, that was off the hook! A three! This is amazing! It's February 4th, 2016. Currently, the end of the world. I'm scared. Don't be. And now here's a couple of my honorable mentions. While these guys didn't make the top 10 of my list, I still wanted to include them because they are really cool and you guys should go check them out too. Hat Films, Anti Donna, Rocket Jump, Lacey Green, Hello Greedo, Megan Turney, The Five Who Fans, uh, Tall Shot TV. And finally, taking the number one spot, my all time favorite YouTuber. It's gotta be Tom Scott. It's just gotta be. Thomas Tomska Ridgewell is just what I would call probably the biggest influence in my life as a solo filmmaker. A lot of the projects I do, I do pretty much alone. I do the writing, the directing, and the producing, and the editing all on my own. And he has been such a big motivation to why you can actually do a lot of the stuff on your own. And while he's growing and learned and like, you know, brought in people and all that, like, so have I. I've learned from my mistakes and learned to grow as a filmmaker watching him since oh, since far longer than I can remember. He'll probably hate me saying this but he is a great motivation as a person and as a filmmaker and just he's a great inspiration to me. Every single one of his sketches or action films that I watch I just want to make something like that. I want to make something one day that will include loads of armed soldiers that have a sniper pug in it. That would be actually super awesome and I since I've started YouTube and since I've been doing YouTube for a long time, you can see a lot of the influence of how I project myself has come from him. Actually, the only one thing as a, as a professional at the moment I can think of as a content creator is the, the only thing that we actually don't have in common, this is purely coincidental, is that we both are at the University of Lincoln, or he was and I am not. That's just coincidental. Although, I don't know why I didn't see that when I applied. Also, his vlogs have just helped me open up myself a little bit more in front of a camera. He thinks he overshares a little bit too much, and maybe sometimes he does, but it's helped me share the right amount that I've wanted to share to a camera, and it's helped me with my mental illnesses. It's just really good. And it's also done something that a YouTuber has never made me do for it, and that is like weekly vlogging. I don't like any other weekly vlogging content, but I like his series last week on hell of a lot because it's pure, and it's raw, and it's just awesome. So yeah, thank you, Tom. Two, two thumbs up to you. Why, why am I doing that? Fuck me. Thank you for the hours of content that I watch every week. It's so cool. Ah, I'm not gay! I love it! So yeah, those were my top 10 YouTubers. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your top 10 YouTubers, you know, in the comment section below. I like seeing what people watch and maybe I'll get some new recommendations because I, well, I don't watch YouTube as much as I used to. I would like to see some new ones. I like maybe musicians. I like finding indie musicians. That's cool. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Stay awesome YouTubers. Fuck my time. Bye.